Hey guys, a few years ago I went on a vacation for about three weeks and I had forgotten about my tea. When I came back, this is what I found. Then I forgot about having forgotten about it. But then I remembered again, as you do, and I decided to do it again, but on purpose. I made five different teas. Solvable rooibos or red bush tea, which is like 90% sugar. Solvable herbal tea with over 20 herbs, which is also 90% sugar. Actual rooibos tea. Then I tried to pour some English breakfast tea, but it was just hot water, because I'm an idiot. So I made a pot of English tea, because I wanted to make every tea as strong as recommended. I also poured a glass of hot water as a control. In the background you see a Galangal ginger licorice tea, which I for some reason didn't film. So we have English tea, water, rooibos tea, Galangal ginger tea, solvable rooibos tea and solvable herbal tea. So now I'll talk you through the three month time lapse. After only five days, fungus started to form in the Galangal ginger tea. It reminded me a bit of an iceberg. Most of the fungus was growing below the water surface. Only a small part was growing above or on top of the water surface. The real rooibos tea started to grow some fungus as well. The water was of course crystal clear. The English breakfast tea collected some dust and had some nasty English tea bubble residue. But other than that it was fine. Both the solvable teas were fine, but they also collected some of that sweet sweet Amsterdam dust. You gotta love it. It's not surprising that they haven't gone bad yet, because they're both practically sugar water. Here you can kinda see what I meant by the iceberg mold. At around day 11 or 12, some mold started growing in the herbal tea. It was growing quite rapidly and new spots were forming fast. The solvable rooibos tea was mostly still collecting dust, but it did have a little speck of mold starting to grow. It's interesting to note that it took twice as long for mold to start growing in this tea than in this tea. And the molds in each tea look completely different. Some fungus finally started growing on the edge of the English breakfast tea as well. So after only 12 days, no tea was unaffected anymore. What's interesting about the English breakfast mold is that it seems to be forming rings. My theory is that it grows down to the water surface and then stops growing when it reaches it. During the day, the tea evaporates a lot faster than during the night. So it has to catch up during the day and stop at night. But hey, that's just a theory. A mold theory. And moving on, we can see that the Galangal ginger tea has gone crazy. As well as the herbal tea, with over 20 herbs. The mold in the fake rooibos stayed small and in one spot. The mold in the real rooibos was going a little crazy. And the water was of course crystal clear. In only a few days, the amount of mold culture started to grow very quickly on the English tea. The mold in the herbal tea somehow sunk and started to grow as a slimy substance below the water surface. Or tea surface. The same thing happened to the wannabe rooibos tea, but it had less mold to begin with. Over time the mold had covered the entire surface of the Galangal ginger tea and had formed a sort of film. As the tea surface dropped it got torn into pieces and then sunk. The little islands of mold on the English tea drifted to the side and then got stuck on the walls where they grew very fluffy. And before you know it, three months have passed. All the teas have dried up, so let's take a closer look and see what's left. I'll start with the water, because that's the easiest and I don't want to think about what I should be talking about just yet. It looks like there are some minerals left behind by the water on the glass. Under the right light you can see some crystals. Under the microscope you can see some smaller crystals, but it isn't all that exciting. 
which is not very surprising because, you know, it was just water. Next up, the real rooibos. It has a little spider web in it. What's cool about this one is that you can clearly see how much the water evaporated each day. Those are the thin lines you're seeing on the edges of the glass. It looks like the water evaporated faster the first few days, probably because it contained more water then. After the first water evaporated, the concentration of tea got higher and less water evaporated. But that's just a theory. Anyway, let's look at some real rooibos residue under the microscope. It looks like a city from above, but with a Godzilla-sized monster wandering the streets. Except it's all really small. It seems like mites have started to live in these little tea deserts. These mites appeared in some of the other glasses as well, which you'll get to see later. They all appear to be the same species, with very long hairs all around their body. They are probably living off the mold, because most of them can be seen in and around the mold. Let's take a look at what happened with the wannabe rooibos. This one is really interesting. There's a lot of this orange-brown stuff left behind. I think that it's mostly sugar, because the solvable rooibos tea was mostly sugar water anyway, combined with fungus and what looks like bacterial colonies. Those round things at the bottom of the glass resemble crateriform bacterial colonies. Fun fact, crateriform is another one of those terms you do not want to put in Google or DuckDuckGo or even Bing images. Ugh. Let's do some closer investigation with tools. It looks like some underground caves have formed, filled with interesting sugar, fungal and bacterial structures. This stuff has a really interesting structure. It's hard to describe, but it resembles the dry parts of dried mango. So, dry dried mango. This is me frantically looking around for a bug I saw walking in frame right before I hit record. And then I got calmed down again by this beautiful structure formed by forgotten tea. This glass does contain a lot of pretty and intricate structures. And then, I found it. It looks like some sort of insect. A very small insect with very small wings. An interesting little thing. Near the end of the time lapse, you could see a thin orange brown layer forming on the glass. And that's what you're looking at now. It looks like it's just a smaller version of what we saw earlier, but then on the glass. Super cool. Here's the English breakfast tea. That sure looks interesting. Let's go to a higher magnification, because more magnified is more better. When I first saw this, I got really excited, because I thought I had red fungus growing, white fungus growing, and green fungus growing, in the shape of roots. Red, white, and green, the colors of the flag of Burundi and Tajikistan. Great! But then I remembered that I put the English tea in a green glass, and my dreams were shattered. But the red and white fungus growing on the bottom were still pretty cool to look at. The sides of the glass looked really fascinating on this one. There was lots of tea residue and white fluffy mold. Next up, the Galango Ginger Licorice Tea. The bottom of the glass has a white spot, which abruptly stops and turns into a brown surface. This glass has probably the most mites in it. What I think is really cool about these different glasses with tea that is no more, and I didn't think about this when starting this experiment, is that each glass has a completely different terrain. They're all different little worlds. And that is especially clear under their microscope. I was quite surprised when I saw the different colors and patterns and shapes in the residue. There aren't just differences between the different glasses, but a single glass is not uniform either. Here you can see a lot of mites grazing on a very fine and fluffy mold. And last but certainly not least, the herbal tea, with over 20 herbs. In the solvable rooibos tea, all the sugar formed a big brown-orange clump together with the fungus and possibly bacteria. 
The herbal tea, however, left behind a thick syrup at the bottom of the glass. There is some of that brown-orange stuff on the sides of this glass as well, but almost all the sugar is in this syrup. The syrup is filled with these orange spheres. I don't really know what they are. We have three options. They could be a fungus, or a bacterial colony, though it's a weird place for bacteria to grow, or it could be solid sugar. But they are impossible to poke through, which doesn't really make sense for any of the three options. So I guess they'll remain mystery orbs for now. Great! This is the last thing I wanted to point out, promised. This is very similar to the brown orange stuff from the other glass, but it's black. Coolio. So this is what happens when you forget about your tea for 3 months. So don't do it. Or do. Those are your only options. Please share this video with everyone you think is done with viruses now and would like to take a look at fungi and bacteria. Before you leave I would like to give a quick shout out to all the beetle larvae and other animals and random stuff that photobomb the time lapse. Okay, bye.